about it. Miss, people did ask, did you see when I asked what we want in the channel? Uh-huh. People want basically the want back to see... backstory? Well, they want to see the movie, basically. The movie about... No, the movie that Nick is making. Oh. Nick, how far away are you from finishing this movie? Oh, be never. I, I think I can get it done before, like, the holidays. So we'll see. Are we filming? You're filming. It's Fuck, just it's a lot yeah. of work for uh, that's what's going to end up being anticlimactic, anticlimactic release on Patreon. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. Fine, Anyways. Welcome to the podcast. Episode. Ep I don't even fucking know. We kind of stopped. 101? No. No, it's like 13 or 14. Perfect. Or well, Perfect. we should say. Yeah. It's yeah. going to say so on the link. It's amazing. We, we got to 20,000 subs on YouTube. I think we're the largest YouTube channel there is. Uh, well, second largest after Mr. Beast. Yeah. And, than us. and Joe Rogan. But it is a fucking accomplishment. I'm very, I'm very excited about it. My new life as a content creator. Um, question. <laughs> if you swell like a drunken sailor, can we even put it on YouTube? What did I say? <laughs> said fucking accomplishment. Oh. Yeah, I'll clean up my, my language. What do you think, Nick? I think we'll be okay. Yeah? Sick. <laughs> Anyways. What have you been up to? Well, don't put it on me. You start. I start? Yeah, talk about your legato playing. Oh, People well, I don't know. So that. much has happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> so much has happened to my, to my, uh, in my musical world lately, because I'm just like at home. Like it's, it feels, I feel like I'm in high school again. Like it's, uh, you know, we're not playing gigs barely at all. And I'm, just drifting further and further into like internet imagination land where it's like, I think I'm Holdsworth today. Like today I'm going to be Wes. <laughs> this is a gypsy jazz day. It's like very unconstrained. You get rest restless. Huh? You get restless. I, I'm not, I'm not restless at all. I feel like I'm actually just. No, that's being restless, but you have to get into, you have to go deep dives into places that you usually would not. I wouldn't call it restless though. I mean, it's like, uh, it used it, it was more like that, but I feel like I've embraced the content making a little bit more and it's just uh it's like yeah, the deep dives are things that like I would never consider doing seriously and like taking a look at and like different technical approaches to the instrument. In one way it's really silly because when it, like we're we're making like this album now at home. And when, whenever it time, comes time to solo, it's like all the shit I'm working on is so irrelevant. It's like completely to the side. Then it's just like, I just play guitar the way I know how to play guitar. It's like, there's no thinking involved, right? Yeah. It's just, you just play your instrument the way you play it. But um, something that's super interesting that's been happening to me, especially like with the Holdsworth stuff where it's at a complete aesthetic mismatch with the kind of music I do like it has nothing to do with it and whenever I like me and Nick whenever I try to like make content about it like there's the moment I try to throw it in is the moment I ruin the solo and like I have to like stop tracking restart do you think it's just because you're not good at it or it's a couple of things I mean for it's it's just kind of an invasive like even like when I pull it off technically, I feel like I don't know what to do after it. And it had very little to do with what happened before it. Okay. It's like at this level of dissonance that has nothing to do with the rest of playing. my musical universe. Yeah. You know, so it's like you just can't play like a bunch of cool Dorian stuff with passing tones. Throw in this fucking thing and then come back, come it, back to it. It, it's, it puts the whole thing at a very different level of dissonance. Um, but uh, but it is super, I feel like through the whole sort of stuff, a lot of really cool stuff happened, like getting to know uh, like Ricardo's content and like that kind of like more Breckery stuff. And now the stuff with Alex Sill just made me like think about both of our playing really like, you know, we talked about it a little bit today, but we talk about it for the people, just everything in my playing has been 
sort of a gradual drift towards playing more staccato, towards like learning how to articulate every note. It's not necessarily staccato, but it's uh, it's because it's more about the beginning of a note than the end of a note. Yeah, and staccato is both. So it's more about having pronounced beginning to to each note, like pronounced playing attack. Percussively. Yeah, playing pronounced percussively. attack. And it's like it's a much harder game, especially when you are like a lot of people can play staccato in the kind of subdivisions that go with the groove. You know what I mean? Like they can play like 16th notes, 8th notes, of like triplets, kind of like articulated. But the moment they need to play a little bit more against, you know, they tend to use more legato kind of techniques. But like... Oh, I see what you're saying. Like to be... So if you do 4 over 3, for example... To play polyrhythmically yeah. and to articulate the beginning of every note in a very... Like you have to be so precise. I mean, that's the thing. It's very audible when you're not being precise. Yeah. And... Um, it just sounds unrelated. It sounds like you're fucking up if you're not like right, right there in it. And, you know, talking to the other day to Alex Sill, like, you know, the video we did together and having him explain legato, I was very dismissive of it when I was like, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't rude to him, but like, you know, in my mind, I was like, ah, like, you know, get past this spiel to where we can talk about the real stuff. And he kept saying like that legato to him isn't like, you know, not the guitar technique legato, but more like the classical music definition of it to where each note gets its full value and the notes are smooth, they move smoothly into each other. And then he kept saying that it's all about getting a specific time feel. And then I was thinking about the way I play legato, even through the Holdsworth stuff, I was really trying to articulate the rhythms with my left hand without picking, but I was still trying to play staccato here. So a, a, a passage would still be like, Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Like that's how I imagine notes because mm. of gypsy jazz and because of how you play too. Yeah. You know, so like if I'm thinking about like you know a groove, and I'm trying to play a thirty-second note line, I'm thinking like. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take like yeah, I always feel like I always think when I'm playing kind of like a snap or something. Exactly, percussive, and and it's just these guys don't, and it gives dimension to their solos that's very different. It's easier to do. In a way, it's, it's no. It's definitely easier. It's it's definitely easier to do. It, which not when stuff is easier to do, it not necessarily makes it worse, mm -hmm. but it necessarily makes it that you have to think yourself if you're doing it because it's easier. Or you're doing it because you like it better. Well, it's like I would say easier in the sense that like it's a shorter path there, but it's still a path I didn't take. So like for me, I was looking at my left hand, and all my fingerings from gypsy jazz. Like, they have a lot of barring going on and things that will not allow you to play passages smoothly with the notes kind of... It, it creates a situation where some notes bleed into each other and some don't. And that kind of unevenness doesn't work. It has to... Everything needs to be completely even. I don't know if I agree with you on that. Because most playing, if you look at home players, most players don't play just completely legato or completely... No, 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 I'm saying it doesn't, it doesn't articulate it in the same way as tonguing. It's just in weird places of the phrase, notes will, when you're moving from string to string in places that are kind of uncontrolled, will just kind of like have this bleed into each other. It just creates a, a thing where, you know, if you're picking every note, like in gypsy jazz, then those notes you're barring, that it doesn't matter. You still hear clean attacks. But like for legato playing, it would just create this smear in places where it doesn't belong. Um, so it's about really like left hand independence and, but again, thinking about it from this place of weaving, caking the lines over the groove in the way it's weird. Cause I do play like that when I'm playing slow, like the Jeff Beck thing where you're just kind of like throwing the notes on the music, like a singer would, yeah. it's that thing with fast playing. And I, I mean, you used to play, like, if you listen to like our first album, right? Like your solo on yeah. May and stuff like that. That's how you used to play exclusively. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, like two, but how long ago was that? Like 15 years ago? Jesus fucking Christ, you're so old. Uh, but uh, yeah, so. Yeah, of course. To me, if, even if you listen, until Dirty Horse, I still didn't. Like Dirty Horse is the first time that I felt like I really got it down, which is the last album we did. Really? Like, yeah, because you could see I was working on it throughout the years and it got better and better and better as far as I was concerned. 
But in Delhi, I was at a complete level, different level, and you can physically see the notes separated. Yeah. And I like that album much better as far as saxophone playing, and that's a big reason why. I don't like the smell. Yeah. Sound, but it was a thing about. To me, technically, I couldn't really figure it out until I listened to Woody Weinhoff, whatever his name is. Because before that, because he does everything with single tonguing, basically. And before that, the only people that I heard those stuff that's kind of similar was uh, stuff with triple tonguing, but it's so specific that it's kind of like licks uh -huh. in some ways. Yeah. Like we don't really, like the best people on it, maybe some of the Balkan people got to a point of it. That they got it, but it's kind of, it's it makes it sound a little bit like an effect, which again I like it a lot. But I'm, it's the point is that I never heard somebody doing the normal playing until him, and then he had a, an ex, he has a book about it, um, which I didn't do really all the practices, but he did. But I read the book and it really helped me to figure it out. And then you can physically see the difference yeah. in that album. And and to me it's it's a big deal because you. Because there are tempos, no matter how far, like if you whistle so the second note, like we talked about it, like there are the tempos that you usually don't really play, that it just goes like, brrr, like it sounds like a roll, but I really like playing in that subdivision, so like the effect. So You still do that legato. Like yeah, yeah, I can't, fast. there's it's no way impossible. to do it. Yeah, it will triple tank, it's impossible to do it. Yeah. But it's like, um, so stuff like that, that it's fine, it sounds like a, like a roll, but there is this tempo which you do, take, 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 like um, to me, in, if you listen to the sex stop, let's say in, um, in Midnight Squall, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't have it before, and that's just the tempo that you need. So it's like boom, boom, boom. Take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of fast. Take it, take it, and, but, and. When you articulate and it, now it I have, sounds crazy. Yeah, and now I have it and I do it. Like I can do it for like, I did it there for like long phrases. And before, so just there, an extra 10, 20 BPM that I got from it made, made a big difference for me. Yeah. Because there was always this thing in the middle where, where, that I couldn't just get it. And if you can't get it relaxed all the time, you can't really use it. So I couldn't just get it. And it made a lot of the songs really annoy me. Well, with the legato stuff, I feel like it has a bigger advantage in jazzy kind of music than in fusion yeah so like for fusion the thing is like the drums and the bass are all trying to shoot their notes into the grid in such a tight way having an electric bass makes a huge difference yeah. for that because it doesn't give it like a pillow that you're playing over it's just like yes it's like you hear the you hear the attacks yeah. in a much clearer way but i think beyond that like the drumming there's no such thing as locking in with like a swing ride cymbal because it's like they're not really playing triplets you know what i mean even the good ones they do like there's kind of like an angle to how they're hitting it it's yeah. like, shh, 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 shh. like they'll they'll swing different degrees so it's like it's more like you're just hearing the big points in time and you're smear you're subdividing them like your time is sort of relative to their time also but, this well recordings i think the definition is not that good no, but so i'm talking really about like new shit if you listen to kurt rosenwinkel play or any of I the would, i would not well <laughs> or uh you know there's, uh, I, I was just listening to another one of the guys that comes out of Kreisberg and like all these guys, that's how they play it. Like all their lines, they have this cascading kind of feel where they're really, when they're playing fast, it's Matheny, it's this even but laid back kind of approach to eighth notes. Yeah, I don't know what those people are going for. Yeah. Like when I listened to it, I was like, I don't know what you... What we're doing. I don't know why they think it sounds good. It doesn't sound good to me. I, I understand that we have a lot of fans. So. Yeah. It's like it's obviously some, obviously a lot of people listened. That's something that took me many years to understand that when I hear something, other people don't hear anything. Like the, the way we post it has nothing to do with where I post it. Yeah. I mean, including it's... jazz, even stuff I like. That's why. Like, I think we had issue, like, there were schools that we went to to teach and everybody were into Marvin, everyone was into Marvin. I remember specifically the school in Florida, mm -hmm. where it's like, all the students were into Marvin. I don't know how it happened. But generally speaking, it didn't really happen to us. Like, no. we didn't, didn't really get the, the jazz school uh, audience, which I think there are a lot of reasons for it, but whatever it is, it's just we didn't have the right, well, right I connect, mean, so. I, I do think, 
uh, I had this realization that you've talked about many times, but like, you know, for me, it's, kind of, it's different when you, when you realize it, like, personally, it, the last time I played the hotel and you were just, you know, like, I, I had a moment of truth with the term whimsical, because it's like, I never thought about it. It's like a whimsical, whimsical playing is like somebody who goes with their whims. And that's like really what we do. No, we sound like, crazy. But I, was, I, was, I didn't call it whimsical. I said just we sound crazy. If you no, but, think but about that, what it looks what it is. like. It's like, it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, you have kind of an intuition of what to do. And you don't have this filter of like, I shouldn't do that because it's not appropriate for the style or whatever. Which a lot, I feel like that kind of thing is how is is the most the most dominant force for like a jazz student that's not rebellious i don't I think i don't think appropriate to the style i think appropriate to the seriousness of the situation yeah because okay should i who's, who's example should i give your plan as example or mine whoever okay i'll give wow, wow wow yeah yeah it's like usually like those people that they wear suits or they you know the church you train hat, that's what Kurt Rosenberg will wear, right? Yeah. And, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, and you go, and it's a nice club. And what we're going for is distinguish. Yeah, distinguish, um, artistic, tasteful. Like, we kind of go. I'm an intellectual. I read books for fun. It's more than the, <laughs> books <laughs> with sentences. <laughs> It kind of remind me like uh, how we always depict in in movies and shows like the, from like the Muslim Brotherhood, like what? like you know like you have brother like in uh, what's the name of the show in Baltimore The Wire. The Wire. That we have like oh, that's oh, always yeah, we have yeah. one assassin that's Muslim. Yeah, yeah. And like wear a suit like a Turk and we make fun of him. That, that's like, what Kurt Russell Winkle reminds you. Yeah, that's what I think they go for. <laughs> oh, that guy's badass. Yeah, that's what they go for. Like, I'm serious, I'm badass, you know, I like something about it. That's, yeah. what it's, that's what I feel like we always go for. Like Plus, Kareem from Oz on the outside. Like who? Kareem from Oz. Yes, yeah, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah, the point is not the, the Muslim thing. The point yeah. is like, hey, we need, we're taking ourselves seriously. We're wearing suits. We're, we're talking. Yeah. We're talking properly. Right. That's what I feel like a lot of us just go for. We think of... Um, the subculture of like six, six because a lot of time what you do stuff like that you it's you go for something that you imagine imagine how things work right 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 it's like you have some some sort of ideal that you try to go so i think that's the ideal right and bernie castle didn't play through a marshall it's but it's, it's more than that it's more like the movies the, yeah. the culture that it's you imagine vibe. the vibe that you want to be yeah. into you're trying to recreate you know. a vibe yeah like you're going you're, you're a part of jazz which is something really mm -hmm. Like a lot of, like you come to it with reverence. So I think that's what they're going for. So when we're playing, it's like, like if trying to be. One of the, my favorite movies, you see Gilad Axelman and like a lot of people, Kreisberg, they, they have my favorite move in music, which is like putting their hand on the fretboard, then shaking their head. No, not yeah, that one. Yeah, I was one. about, I actually about to say Not that, that one, not that idea. That was a like, bad idea. It's a contained emotion. Like I have so much emotion and so many things, I'm containing it. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm like select. Yeah, yes, that's, that's, that's the thing of like uh, being stoic. It's like, it's, it's all together, right? Yeah. Um, and we play, it's like, Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, but it is how we play. Yeah. And it's ridiculous and it's never stopping. Like, people do the deeper they do. It's like, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to think about how we play in, yeah. um, in a vocalized, how it would look, what it would look like way. Right. Compared to verse people. Yeah. So, God. Yeah. Do fine. you think it takes him like seven hours to come? <laughs> <laughs> they're like holding everything in. It's like those, they're kind of like sting like sutra monks. No, they just come like this. Chick, 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 chick. I can imagine like Axel would be like. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not now. Not yet. <laughs> no, not ready. 
Yeah. She hasn't suffered enough. Like, <laughs> then, he opens his, then he opens his eyes and starts like, hip! <laughs> Tell me it was hip. He liked it, right? <laughs> it was worth the wait. <laughs> You know, also this is so that's something I realized about our music, and then I think that connects also the way we dress on stage. And now that we're old, it's even worse. Oh yeah. So it's like being old, dress up like we're old hipsters that didn't realize yet that we got too old to dress up like that, and also yeah, no, and just and then playing like that. I think those three things together are this recipe for success. I think some people like it, but yeah. I think that a lot of people, I think for a lot of people it's too much. I think it's, a lot of it is too much, and it's more than it's too much, we don't understand it. And I think when you see it live, it's fine, but I think when you see it in a video, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. Especially when, you know, people fuck up your video. But, if, but either way, I think it's a little bit of an issue, because I don't think people understand. And I think for us, we got into music with it's very strange to get into music the way we did because people didn't really play the music we liked in Israel. Mm -hmm. right? I'm not talking about fusion, I'm talking about jazz we liked or fusion or whatever, but yeah. they didn't play. We didn't have people in Israel playing music that we like went crazy for. And even the Israeli music that we liked, most people didn't really play and sure. perform with anymore. So, and it was before videos, so it's really the reaction to like the way you analyze music was you listen and you experience music as you with headphones. And I think for us, it was a lot of things about music was we're just listening to the audio and just thinking about where it takes. It's as if we're playing to somebody listening with headphones, mm -hmm. you know, but like the, the Justin used to tell us all the time, he said we call it a show because you see. Yeah. That's what we call it. So Justin used to say that, our, dumb, our first drummer, and he was, people loved watching him play. Like, he was the drummer that, that everybody liked the most. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. people were really sad when, when he was gone. Yeah. And, and people that started with him, was, everybody was really sad when he was gone. And in, in a lot of ways, I think it was, you know, one of the, he was our best drummer, I think in a lot of ways. Yeah. Right? So it's like, I think Everett does generally the best, and the best fit, but Justin, when he was on, he was on. Yeah. He was a showman too. He, he, yeah. he knew how to turn it on and just, you know. Yeah. And just everybody, like the way he smiled when he played and... Carried himself, yeah. Yeah, it was just great. So, with us, we never really paid that much attention to it. We paid more attention to the playing and, yeah. Look where that got us, making fucking content. 20,000 subs, baby. Fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm bricked up. I'm bricked up. That's what the kids say. That's what they say. Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. yeah. It means like your heart is a brick? That's exactly what it means. Nice. I learned something hip today. Yeah. You're uh, welcome. Thank you. Nick and I teach you the words of the I, and I know we, we really did, were a bad fit for Israel and everything that came up. Uh, honestly, the only silver lining of the Hamas thing uh, that I see right now that I really am enjoying is seeing the Israeli New York guys so quiet. I wanted to move her. I wanted to move her in. Uh, that's a crazy thing, but I wanted to move her in COVID. To where? To what happened to Niroz. Oh, to Niroz. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, that's uh, fucked up. But uh, but but they're so quiet because they're they're so concerned about their like Europe tour connections and and uh, this. You know, I don't think all of them are quiet. I think they're, uh, no, a lot no, of, some them, of them are I, very loud. But I a think lot. a lot of them are just completely shocked. Um, well, a lot of them don't, you know, they don't know how this will affect. Again, if they become vocal, they will. You're, you're, you're eating from, you know, you're drinking from a well that is very small and very like, you know, very guarded. It's like it's not like if you lose. It's not like if a guy like Gilad loses his like European tour connection, there's another one. Yeah. There's one guy who does, yeah, of course. Who does this thing, right? Do we really want to talk about it? We can talk about it. You want to talk about it? Yeah, yeah. it's fine. Yeah, it's true. I, I don't know. To me, I think those people, for a lot of them, and I'm not saying about him specifically. I don't want to name names just because I'm not sure how everybody was. Yeah. But I think for a lot of people, it was just, it was just the hip thing 
like Americans, a lot of Americans hate America, right? right. And it's more hip to be like, oh, Thanksgiving, fuck Thanksgiving, you know, it's like quite a horrible holiday. Columbus should have died in seas yeah. and all that stuff. And it's, it's, it's the culture as well. Uh -huh. Like it started in, in the 90s when we grew up, it was the, it was the, it was the counterculture. Uh -huh. And then it just, it took over. And so I think it was very easy to also be anti-Israel in the same way. Uh -huh. And it's like, yeah, even though we have the market and stuff, look at the other side, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, I think once that happened in October, on October 7th, a lot of those people were, well, we're the victims now. And the people around me were like, no, you're not. No. And then we kind of lost it. Like, that's what I saw from a lot of people that I know um, on Facebook and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it's... Uh... It's an interesting time to be an Israeli for sure, but it's, uh, I, I gotta say, I feel so happy to, uh, to be on a side where I don't see any of the repercussion because of the way I built my life and the people I surrounded myself with. Like it's, yeah, we didn't hide anything from the beginning. No. We did lose a bunch of people because all the stuff like yeah, that happened. We lose a bunch of people. Yeah, of course. Every one of them. Of course, of course. It's but like, it I wasn't like a big. A it wasn't like a big like. Oh my God! People realized. We also didn't say. It's like we didn't need to say anything because it's like we just, you know, we never apologized. We never say anything. So yeah, yeah, no, it's, I'm, it's, it's yeah, fine. We all we already had this guy. It's like I'm calling all the venues and telling them you're Zionist. So yeah. We had it like yeah, no, free pass now, like free Willy. <laughs> like years ago, we had it years ago, and this guy, I'm calling all the venues and I'm telling them. Go him. fucking ahead. Like a guy, that, yeah. he, he, wasn't he? Like he lived in Egypt, but he wasn't yeah. Egyptian. Yeah. But in like, the states, like we taught him in Miami. We we did a clinic in Miami that he was in. Yeah. Dude. Ah, just the Jew hating. It's like. They, the, the amazing thing is that they think that like they invented it now. It's like they, they think it's so original. It's like it's such a spicy new stand. Yeah, to do that. But I, you just remind me of that video you told me about. It's so funny, Nick. Did you ever see that? That I'm sure that, I sent it to you guys. That guy that gets like once. a copy of Mein Kampf. For his that month. was Minecraft. It's like oh, Minecraft, that's Dad. Minecraft. One of the best videos on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did you even get this? <laughs> it's like you asked for Minecraft. Minecraft, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, where do we go from here? What else? What are you? What are you? I don't know. What I told. We can talk about what I told you. Right. But I was high last night and I was listening to my solos. Uh huh. And love them. I love it. I love listening so much when I'm high, and it's so weird, because I would not listen to my solos like when I'm not high. Uh huh. But also, it's not like Daniel's like, oh, you should just masturbate. You don't talk a lot about men coming, huh, Dari? I do. I love it. Because <laughs> you know, just like you should masturbate in front of my mirror. And yeah, like, like American Psycho. That's that's yeah, equivalent. Yeah, there's as many new terms for a man being hard as possible. It's like <laughs> suspicious. Um, I'm, I'm really into men lately. Well, I guess kids in that case, because that's a new Gen Z thing. You want to know when yeah. kids are hard. Uh, Talking about being hard, why uh, why do you have um, yes. holes in your shirt where your armpits are? It is the stank oh. burnt through. Are, are, you too, yeah. are you too muscular? Uh, that's that's where people slip in and rest up. <laughs> <laughs> you give them the outfit, the outfit treatment. And it farts too at each pump. <laughs> nice. I'm now more, I'm bricked up again. More well masked. Um, so you're listening to your own song. Oh no, so I'm saying that my, that was it was funny what you said because my thought exactly was that I, it's not like I look at myself in the mirror when I'm high and I was like, oh, this guy is so hot. Yeah. What a hot guy. Not just, at all. Just when you listen to yourself playing saxophone. Yes. On an album. Yes, that's the only thing that I do that I'm like, oh, that's good. Yeah. It's not like I look at anything else that I do and I'm like, oh, fuck, Same. yeah. Dude, yeah. So, I, I was like, let's so I'm weird. like, I'm the weakest one here. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, and you're high? Yeah. Like, every, every, I never, any, every, every other thing. I, I never did jujitsu high. No? No. You should do it. Yeah, I should. It sounds so much fun. Yeah, you should like check the It's like it's a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd, I feel like choking somebody would be fine high. I just don't know what it's like going to be completely crushed high. <laughs> yeah. 
and be like, uh, just no, kill, yeah. just kill me, finish it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Give peace a chance, bro. Uh, <laughs> it does. I know you, I used to talk about it. It still is astounding to me, jiu-jitsu, when I think about the parallel to music. What's the parallel? The parallel of, I do it now, and the, obviously the people that are much better than me, they kick my ass just even in the gym. I'm not talking about like obviously worldwide. And when they have people that kick their ass in town, or even have other people in the gym that kick their ass, and then in town, and then in the Midwest, and then in the state, and then the world, right? That kick their ass. I guess a lot of the best people in the States. But there are so many levels, mm -hmm. right? Because the, the best one is called Golden Ryan, and nobody's close to him, and he destroys people that are, that destroy everybody else. So well, there are so many levels to it, and it always makes me feel like I think about music and how I don't know when I forgot it, but it's as if you can't, it's, you know, your brain doesn't let you remember the, when you were really a young kid. Yeah. There's something in your brain that changes, but you can't remember those. And people, a lot of people think, oh, I remember when I was two. No, you saw pictures right. and your brain makes up yeah. the difference. You don't remember, uh, just the way the brain is structured. I'm not know how brain is structured, but still. Um, so sometimes I forgot that there are so many levels in music, in music oh, yeah. that you can be the best person in your block and you can actually play a little bit compared to everybody and everybody would look and they're like, oh yeah, this guy can play. And I would look at somebody as, and I was like, no, you can't play. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, bo and both are right. It, the, the incredible thing, I mean, especially like, you know, what we're doing, like we're talking to people who are like, you know, me included and like, you know, Ricardo and like Brett and Alex and like, if you like that and Kreisberg, it's like one, like a Wait, million. Wait, are you doing something with Kreisberg? We did like, you know, the music real talk. Oh uh, yeah, back in the day. Yeah, we can do, I, I think we'll do more, but like, you know, it's like a fraction of a percent of guitar players, like uh, the smallest sliver. And it's like, there's so many fucking guitar players. And like, in, like, if you look at, for me, I don't even look at them. Like yeah, and even, and even that, you look at people, like, you look at people that are complete professional top 1% player, and you're like, right. oh, this guy sucks. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Those are the kind of people I'm Like, we saw, thing. I'm going to name, and people can met, but we saw Aldemir. I, I actually don't like Aldemir from Fusion and don't like um, Max Stern, show. right? Oh, Max Stern, yeah. Yeah, and, but we saw Aldemir playing a show, and I was like, dude, this fucking sucks, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, objectively, like from, uh, well, that was a crazy decision to have him go on cruise to the edge. It or, seems like he doesn't on, give a shit. It seems like he didn't like, give a know, shit. He went alone with a percussionist. I think we talked about it on the podcast. After I'm sure. We, I'm sure we did. And, and, yeah, it was just a crazy thing. But I'm saying, I'm if on the level of of just like face value guitar playing, you know, it's a bunch of like it's complicated music. It's hard. You know, it's like... He's one of the best guitar players alive. In history, yeah. No, I mean, we're not saying history, because history is very short of guitar. People having enough time to just, I'm going to be a guitar player, you right, know. Right, right. No, like, I'm going right. to shred now. So, in all the planets, I was like, one of the best on this planet. And it's like, what about the other planets? <laughs> but no, it's... Uh, he's one of the best people alive. Okay? <laughs> yeah. That's enough. Okay. And guitar. But I hear it, I was like... <laughs> yeah 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 but like if you like put him next to like just the guys that live like let's say in a one mile radius here it's gonna be like if i put him against people that are famous for playing guitar right at famous rock bands that did so solos that everybody knows like if i put aldi miola compared to jimmy page right right i i yeah the internet's full like there's this level of people who are way richer than virtuoso guitar players like gu guitar players in famous bands yeah. That just like, you see him on like YouTube things, like Rick Beato's channel or something, like playing one of their songs. It's just like, dude, like this is a fucking guy I can't play. You know what I mean? How I'm did like, you think? Like C to A minor? Yeah. What were you thinking there? I like G I minor. I was like, well, I only know two shapes. <laughs> yeah. Rick Beato's actually becoming a little more bearable now that he's rich and famous. Really? Yeah, because it's like he's now allowing himself to not ask questions to showcase the amount of homework he did. Oh. Like, hey, Sting, 
what did you, how did you think of that G minor 11 over F in the third measure? I was like, oh, I just like, stop saying things. <laughs> it's just disgusting for a while. But like, you know, now it's just, he lets the people talk. The Ingve Malmstein interview was just badass. Like, because Ingve is so badass. Yeah, but Ingve is. Ingve is just, Ingve is like uh, pure id, just so. Talking about being ridiculous. But yeah. Like he is more of our. Yeah. Like, I don't want to say he's our ideal because musically not, but I, like I never really listened to him. But I love him. In, I like, still love him. Yeah. No, no, he's, he's grandiose. And That's how like, we should have acted. We're wearing leather. This is crazy. People just th think we're gay. <laughs> Zawa! Zawa! Which yeah. we are, so. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nothing going about it. Yeah. No, it's, yeah, I don't know, it's not, yeah. but that's another thing that's really strange with us, because in a character, we're so not that. Yeah, we're walking. But we are crazy. I guess it is too, because I don't remember, we were in, uh, in Alabama, and we went to his house, that was horrible. Yeah, and then he became the devil. Yeah, and we were like, well, the realization we had is that we, we get, we go to hell all the time, but then we became sa we become Satan. Yeah. Like we think all the situations, like you guys are crazy, we're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm trying to think about who there was anti-Semitic, like, and they were just like looking at us, like in those rooms that we it were. It was Trey's at. place, right? I know, but like, what, what like? His name is Trey, right? Trey, yeah. We haven't seen him in forever. Forever. If if I was like back then, like you know, because we were pretty like loud and obnoxious and many 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 nights oh not, not 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 like right now it was so reserved yeah but you know, and like, when we play in, gigs but, that i don't yeah but but in, but in public before i'm saying like there were probably a lot of people like that uh were like in the background not not participating in the conversation just sitting there like looking around being like the jews like you know look at those jews those jews are being sad. i don't know if i know we're, we're, we're jews but we probably said look at those crazy people we did have this great they know you're jews we did have this look great, at you we did yeah. uh you know you only know when you look for it if you don't didn't go up I'm looking, looking for, for jews it. yeah because you don't you remember we, oh you weren't there did when you, go you looking without me no we went to we did a gig at the synagogue where we did gigs mm -hmm. And it was Nick and John and I, and we were talking to this lady about how he doesn't look Jewish. Yeah, Nick he doesn't does look, not Jewish, look Jewish, and she didn't know. And I was like, "What do you mean? We all don't you know that we all look the same?" She's like, "No," because she only knows Jews. It's like Asian people, Chinese people. Like for them, we don't all look the same. Yeah, but if they, if Godzilla showed up, they'd be a Godzilla. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but that's what I was thinking too. He <laughs> doesn't look like us. <laughs> Is that your angle? You? <laughs> you look so different, dude. No, what did I say? You look like two Jews. What? <laughs> On top of each other, oh. like one Jew giving another Jew. That's what I right. said. That's what I told him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um... Yeah, you're, you told her to guess. You're like, two of us are Jewish. <laughs> She's like, oh, which ones? <laughs> <laughs> and I tell her the ones the two that looks like everybody else here. Yeah. She's like, what do you mean? I was like, she wow. She was acting naive. She knew. No, she didn't. In her heart of hearts, she knew. Um, I'm saying you have to look for it. What was I going? I was going for it somewhere. Yeah. Oh, if you were crazy, that's correct. Word. But there was something else about it before you bought. And... So well, you, you, I feel like you were directing this whole thing. I was, but then I lost it. Cause, but I had we something important about looking for Jews, and I think that's where your came in and ended. No, it was before, but at a point house, before that. Trey's house, becoming the devil. We became the devil and then we talked about the fact that, um, and I think that, yeah, that we acted crazy and people saw us act crazy. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it, it is so bizarre going from that life to this life. Like, it took me I want to say until maybe September of this, uh, year. of this year to realize what happened. Yeah, I'm not accepting it, though. Huh? I'm not accepting it still. That's yeah, why I want to go and play. I, I'm not saying I don't want to go and play. I want to go and play. But it's, 
you know, the way we were doing things, like in my mind, this was just kind of like a break. And it's not just a break. It's yeah. Like there's a, it's, it's, it's a just, paradigm shift. It's a paradigm. And again, you know, it's, uh, you know what it took for me was realizing, like, literally how much I'm enjoying certain parts of my life. Which before, like, if the shit with you didn't happen, I would have destroyed my family. <laughs> no doubt about it. I would have run it to the ground. I did not have a way of stopping. Like, everything, everything in my, that whole space of being on the road was always a negotiation kind of with my wife. You know what I mean? It's like, it was just like me trying to convince her, me saying it's justified, me insisting. And like in the meantime, this like baby was like becoming a person. And it's just like more and more fun to just hang out with her and just like not be a deadbeat, you know, like just be there. Yeah. Like... I, yeah. Well, you disagree? Yeah, I completely disagree with you. What do you, what do you, what do you disagree with? That most people have jobs and they work yeah, and they job. don't just hang out and be a stay-at-home dad no like no you not, no not a stay-at-home dad she's in daycare full-time or come here and work literally for the last two months yeah it's been amazing that that's like, that <laughs> shift been incredible like after like we got into that groove of like me back to work and like you know the yeah that's not you hanging out more with her and realizing why it's like oh I shouldn't work because I need to hang out more with her. It's you getting used to her being at, like, being like, oh, she's okay, I have time to do something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. I'm not, I don't want, I definitely don't want to be like full stay at home dad. Like, that's not my um, point. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying the way you put it. It's, it's not, it's just not the way it is. Okay. I'll, let I, me, understand, let, I understand what you're saying. You're saying, you're saying that you would have major issues if you didn't. But, she but, would too. You know, it's like, it's. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's no, she, she, she'll have major issues anyway. What? You... That's how it happens. Kids have issues. People have issues. But you've, um, your, pa your parents are around. You think you're so... You think you're so... Uh, you think leather? I have issues? <laughs> Nick, do I have issues? Nick, your issue might be your parents love you too much. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a weird way to look at it. It's like, do you look around? Do you look around the world and you're like, oh, everybody is so balanced. <laughs> Some people are balanced. Some yeah. people are more balanced than others. I, I, yeah, I, know some, I, I know some unhinged people. <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's what I'm saying. That's my point. <laughs> okay. It's like you, you're surprising me. That's uh, dangerous not to, to realize. What? That's like things happen in the world. Of course things happen. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on? I don't know. I'm very Every confused by Danny right now. Every everything got a little weird. Yeah, you know, so I like hanging out with my daughter, man. <laughs> it's nice. That's all I'm saying. It's I'll, okay. I'll ref, I'll reframe. I'm saying that for a long time I was sort of struggling against what has happened, and I've kind of learned to accept it and work within the framework of it a little bit more. And you know, enjoy like the accomplishments, enjoy like making the content, which was more like. Rep, wrapping my head around the fact that that's what we're doing now with our time was very hard for me, you know. But then I was just like, okay, let's fucking yeah, it's just do reality. It well. It's just reality. It's not about stuff being better or worse or or if things if we kept playing, maybe we kept playing. We were, you know, we would do the next tour and everything was amazing and everything would work out perfectly. Like the first the tour we did before COVID hit, but it was like insane. And maybe things would have been horrible. And no, no, but I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about what could have been. I'm talking about my, my attitude towards reality. So for a long time, I was already kind of in this kind of groove of working like this, coming here, doing the content, yeah. teaching, taking care of the baby, doing all that stuff, but very embittered against it. You know what I mean? Like it, it really, it didn't, like I Like you I, didn't accept that it's reality. Yeah, I didn't accept that the previous phase was over. Like in my, in my mind, we just put it on hold and we're going to kind of get back to doing it in the same format. And, 
you know, my point is that like, you know, internally through probably a lot of weed, weed yeah, uh, <laughs> I became a plant. Uh, I'm not, listen, I'm not disagreeing with you on, this is just the reality that is, so you might as well focus on the positive sides of it. That's all I'm saying. But no, because what you're saying, <laughs> what you're saying is, you, like you have to trash everything else, like this is the epitome of, like whatever I'm doing is the best. It's not the best, that's just the way it happened. That's reality. I'm not trashing you anything. You know what I mean? That's just the way it is. I'm so, saying, I'm so saying it's I'm, fine. I'm focusing on the positive. Yeah. Your life sucks. Stop saying it does. No, Jesus. I'm not saying it sucks. Fucking it's crap. great. It's yeah. great. That's not my point. My point is like, things okay. happen. That's the way it is. And you know, we're doing the making the most out of it. Yeah. That's, that's, only, that's what I'm saying. It's, we're yeah. just making the most out of it and it's good. Yeah, but uh, it's, it, even in the context of uh, figuring out like, in my mind, to a degree, you know, I really did think that, like, if we stop touring, everything is over. Um, and some things are so, over. Yeah, so in yeah. some ways, yes. Some yeah. ways, no. But, but, like, you know, just even, like, doing the project we're doing now, recording, it's like, dude, as long as you put the energy into, like, making music, into improving, taking the opportunity, taking the opportunity to practice. To practice yeah. I haven't, I realized that, like, you know, something I've, told my students for like a decade being on the road is actually the appropriate course of action when you're on the road, which is like that practicing should only be like problem solving. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, for me, like that's all there was time for, right? It's like I'd get home, I'd be tired. I definitely was not going to start opening up how to play like... No, unless it was something like that you were really interested in, like gypsy jazz. Gypsy jazz, yeah. yeah. It'd be like either like a passion would come and like be kind of like swooping and I'd just like be in that mode of action for a while. Or it would just be like, okay, that song I suck at. I need to get a subdivision that sounds good, better on this song, yeah. this chord I eat shit on. So everything would be kind of pinpointed because of the... The music just, we play. Yeah, the music we play would be demanding and I'd have to just spend time with the things that were not working. But now, that's not really directing it anymore. And it, this really feels to me like the only... Even college had too many, like, too many demands on me to be so open. Like in high school, I would listen to music and be like, I feel like working on Greg Howlick's today. Yeah. I feel like working on tapping. I feel, it would just be like... I'd, but the world back then was not the world it is now so you'd have less stimuli so you could still be focused in some way right you could be into like coltrane for a month or three months yeah. now it's if you're going on youtube you're pulled too many directions yes. you can't you can't go with what's interesting to you by scrolling because ev- the information's coming you way quicker than your the time you have to break it down yeah um but uh but I feel like now I'm at this phase again, which is really like, you know, exciting. I mean, even, even the Holdsworth stuff that I still haven't found a home to in my playing, like just taking like one of those things and actually just treating it without judgment, just like something new, you know, that sounds the way it sounds. It's fucking nice to like spend a few hours with, yeah, like, I wish I just I don't I wish I had it in me. I just don't have it in me. But a concept like I showed you, like with the pentatonics, with the yeah, that's chords. interesting. But right. that's exactly the kind of type of stuff I would do before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I would be like, okay, I have something that I can add to my. I look for something that add a different sound that I can add to my playing, that is not a lick, but it's kind of like you know, but it's specific enough that it has its own sound. That's that's how I've been working, but. Like a lot of the stuff, like the whole sort of stuff and all the things, like I, I can't really get into it. It's just my brain doesn't. It filters. Doesn't let doesn't let me. Is it doesn't let me do it? Cause in my and I did write a lot of music, like the album we're doing now. It's like some of it is old, but some of it is new. Mm-hmm. So I did write a lot of music in the last year and a half. Um, but it's still for, to me, it's kind of like. Music is still kind of like something that me and you do, and. Obviously, if we can do it with John, but it's great. And if we can play with him, it's great. But yeah, but, but if we can't, like it's, like, it's, it's also kind of like fine. something the two of us do. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I, 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 
fucking love having this setup now. It's like no, recording at home is so much fun. It, it's it. I've I've recorded at home for a while, but just doing what me and Nick do, like I feel like I learned how to get a sound. Like my God, it took a long time. Yeah. It took like a year to. Yeah, it's only even over, but yeah. Yeah, but like you know, just having like the Martin, having the Gypsy Jazz guitars, having like great amps, and just being able to just. You yeah, sleep, sleep in your own bed and come in and walking, and then if you don't feel like it in a day because your mind is somewhere else, you don't have to do it yet. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my, my favorite thing to do now is, uh, is ed eating edibles at night and editing audio. <laughs> like, you know what I did two days ago? I, I was like looking for like a delay sound for the, for the saxophone, and I was, it was like 10 p.m. and alone, like listening to it, and then I was just like, I don't really know uh, the, uh, the software very well, so I went and listened to like every single delay sound on it, and it was like amazing. It was just an amazing use of time, and like it wasn't stupid to do. Like no, no, no. Like I, I, like I know what it sounds like now, and it's just like oh, like this, it's like this is a chorus thing. And just like you know, exp taking the fucking time to just get it, and then like EQing. Yeah, before, before it was more like. Just put something so I want to deal with it. Right. And like EQing, like li listening to like reading what different people do. And just, you know, with especially like, you know, how subtle of, of changes you need to make to make something. So Again, when you're, list when you're dealing with your own music and you get the control over it to like manipulate it. And then you're like, just have an idea of what the guitar should sound like. And then you're able to sort of make it do that. I think it'll be cool. I think I'm very interested to see what happens with this album because I think it'll be cool to add some small stuff here and there. Mm -hmm. But I don't know until we get drums and uh, mi like MIDI back, basically. Mm -hmm. So because yeah. we're working with two other Dan's. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's gonna be the most Dan-heavy album we've ever made. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we will we will see. It's interesting. I don't know. It's interesting to see what's gonna happen with it. Yeah, it's also nice to make some music that you make music and not content, but it's still a very big difference. Absolutely. I, I, um, I love it. It's like nothing like working, the kind of work that we do, uh, you know, making this kind of stuff. It's great, but it doesn't do the thing to time where just the whole day disappears. Yeah. Like just, just music does that. Yeah, I do like doing the show, so we should really go and go back to it yeah. when we have some time. What the hell? It's because we've been doing the album, that's why. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, it's good. I don't know. I think it's good. I think it's what it is. I told you, I think we should try to incorporate... Reality is reality. It is what it is. I think we should incorporate, uh, incorporate some playing some weekends and stuff and see and build into yeah, something that's what i think we should start doing it's gonna be tough with john and everett that's the one thing that's gonna fucking suck yeah so it's gonna be tough with them because you can't ask them you should just show up with tracks i'm really i'm really notice. bummed out Stop. i'm really i don't know if john, john is probably not gonna listen but john if you listen it's fine it's like i'm just i'm disappointed i really thought he's gonna when push come to shove he's gonna find a sub for the other gig yeah, you know, it's... Because uh, it's not like even he's making more money, you know, it's like... Yeah, well, it's, I think he's in this financial situation where he's just kind of... And yeah, uh, but it's, it's, you get, you know, you, but get, I talk, in, I talk to you him. get into your home routine. It's, you can't, you can't, it's momentum, you know. Well, it's, something. Ba it's basically also, it's like, it's easier. I guess I, I understand the situation. I understand the situation is not very easy to find a sub, but I feel like, you know, I bring Fujisaki or something. Yeah. And, and I talk to him about it. And you bring her, and then you can make basically the same amount of money, or like right. a little bit more if he does it with us. But it's like, oh, what, I will do this all that stuff. This is more like stuff. a phone call conversation than a podcast one. <laughs> no, it's good. They should know that it's a bummer. <laughs> it's a bummer. It's a, the bummer is that uh, you build a certain machine, and the moment... It's no longer in motion. It's, it's not very the same hard. Machine. Yeah, and it's very it's hard not, to it's just. It's not the same. It's uh, yeah. it, 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 like momentum is the grease that keeps the wheel moving. A lot of the times, it's not. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's it's just being used to. Again, it's uh, how everybody negotiates. It's weird. I was talking to the 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 bassist from Empty Pockets. By the way, oh my God, he had this. It was. 
out of all the accessories for musicians I've ever seen, it was by far the best thing I've what ever seen. What do you seen. have? He had a pack you put on your strap for bass, and it vibrates in the frequency you're playing, and it feels like you're standing in front of a 10,000 watt amp. It's so crazy. You play the low E, it's just like... <laughs> really? And it makes your time so good. Really? Yeah. It's insane. It's like, it feels better than the best live stage situation that you could That's have. That's so crazy. And it, they only make it for bass, obviously. Obviously, guitar yeah. doesn't, you know, be crazy on guitar. But like, it's just, because he plays with in-ears and gigs, uh, and it's just, I, I put it on, and it's just like, you have to try it. And I was just like, I, I'll try it. That was just like, uh, you can't make videos about this thing because it won't, it won't carry yeah. how awesome it is. It's the best feeling in the world. If you feel like you're getting a back rub, and he's just like, yeah, I can't play without it. It's like, I do it like recording. It makes practicing bass fun, which is like <laughs> the one thing that they don't do, you know? Practice? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, I told Johnny has to buy it, and he said he doesn't have money, but... Maybe How much is it? <laughs> How much is it? It's like 400 bucks. Oh, wow, yeah, but yeah, well, no not fucking way. Cheap, not cheap why, why would it? Yeah. For what? For a dorm? Yeah, but it would make a dorm awesome. It would make any gig awesome. It would make you want to play bass. It would make you want to play the bass. How would you want to play the bass? Yeah. Oh, you see, that's what I want to talk about. Now I remember. What? Finally I remembered. That crazy lady that came to our show in oh, a dorm. Yeah. What happened? I'm Italian. Oh. That was the, I told my dad that, he about shat himself laughing. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? No. No, you should tell people so if people... What are you doing with your hands? This is the weirdest podcast stance I've ever seen in my I'm life. I'm stretching. But it's like, it's been 10 minutes of stretching. Yeah. Are you stretched? Yeah, it's called, <laughs> it's called being a yogi. Um, what, uh... What, uh, oh, so this lady came to us, she was kind of drunk and older. She's like, can you play? Oh, can, that? Can you play? Um, she said, asked for Taylor Swift. No, she started with Ed Harris and some organist. Oh, she asked for John Bonamosa. No, later. She, yeah. asked her, so. she started with asking for, do, can you play Ed Harris and this organ player? I don't remember. Jim, whatever. And it's like, I was like, do you know them? I was like, yeah. It's like, can you play it? It's like, wait, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know that song. <laughs> nice move. It's like, she's like, oh, it's like, are you sure? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's like, you know, if you play Taylor Swift, everybody will be dancing and singing. You know? And then she's like, can you play something you can sing along to? And Danny was soloing on Cherokee. So I said, you can sing along to it. Look. I remember soloing and just hearing you do that. Like, what the fuck is going and I guess on? I go, the joke with that is like, you have to go for the entire thing, right? If I just stopped for 10 seconds, it wouldn't be funny. So I just kept going and going, going, going. I'm just looking at in the eye yeah. while I'm doing it. Okay, just keep going until the end. And then she's like, can you play Joe Bonamosa? <laughs> John Bonamosa, yes. Yeah, and then, then just she kept talking about shit. And then when we stopped, she's like, the most important thing is moving. Can you dance? And you and Nick were like, no, we can't dance. And she was like, the ladies love it when you dance. If you want to get with the ladies, you got to move. You gotta move, it's the most important thing. And then I danced, of course. Yeah. And she said that I get it. Yeah. Uh, of course. And then you left, you went away. Yeah, she was scaring me, she was a very scary hag. Yeah, what, uh, and then what happened? What did she say? She told... She's asking for your, this is what my friend oh, okay. She's asking, where are you from? Because you talk, you know. Funny, yeah. And I was like, okay, guess. And she said, Ukraine. <laughs> and I said, it makes sense, but no. Guess again, and she's like, Russia. I was like, no. And then she said, I don't know what she said. Romania. But I said, I, I, she said, no, she said something, and I was like, oh, it's getting colder. And I said, Romania, Serbia, Albania. And I was like, more south, more south. And she's like, I don't remember, Turkish. Yeah. 
And I went, I'm Italian! Pam 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 yeah. That's my favorite part. Yeah, that was a good part. Um, it was pretty funny talking to her, and when she said, talked about how laughter is the most important, it was like, there can only be one most important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what Nick told her. You have, to, you have to laugh when you dance. And then she said, guess what I am. And then they guessed and she said, American. <laughs> yeah. But I also. She owned my ass. Her old ass owned me. And, what, and then she guess? said, German or something? Yeah, it's just some white Polish. Polish, Polish, yeah, you guess Polish. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, American, but also Danish. Yeah, Danish, I uh, know, yeah, German, Such. Danish, and you wouldn't believe it, but I recently found out a little bit Norwegian. Wow. Like, she said it like Norwegian was like the most ethnically. Diverse, like it's gonna blow my mind. Like she's from the sub Africa subcontinent in Africa. Yeah. Like you wouldn't guess by looking at the whitest person you've seen in your life. I would never say the that Congo. Say, but <laughs> Perfect. Oh uh, yeah. Great so, interaction. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, good. Good. yeah. The story was that we're still crazy in a do like in even in situations when you shouldn't be crazy. I mean, you should be crazy there. That's the craziest situation. I love, uh, I love everything about that gig now. That that manager that like had like we, we almost got fired, and then he just gave up on on, on firing the musicians. On firing the music. Yeah, he just was, was like, ah, it's a fucking job. Just kill me. Just let me go home and do my opiates. Yeah, we want to be. Should we try to be friends with him? He doesn't seem like he likes us. No, he doesn't like us at all. I don't want to. I don't like anybody anymore that I don't know. <laughs> I've, I've found that out about myself like stranger I, danger but... yeah I'm just done with new people like I would just I, I look up from my phone for too short of a while and then it's like awkward because I have to take my earbuds out and by the time I do it's like okay so now I'm talking to you you know it's like a statement of attention just like like now we're engaging and then I have nothing to say I'm just like please let me put them back in like I just I just want to get back to my to hearing people talk on YouTube. And then she's like, so, this is McDonald's. <laughs> so, this is a coffee shop. Do you want to order? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I have, I, have, I have social anxiety now. Social anxiety? I'm anxious. I'm anxious. You know, one of the favorite things that I heard recently was that because of the audio shortage, people are doing microdose and meth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I need to do meth because I can't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most hardcore reason to do hard drugs. Yeah. I can't concentrate long enough. <laughs> yeah, I miss math. Oh, the is pretty great. Oh my god, it's the best. There really is nothing quite like it. You, you think we should have invested in Bitcoin? We should have invested in Adiol. Just kept all of it oh like god. a dragon. Save it. And then I'll sell it to people. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, the good stuff. Fast releasing. God, I remember when, when my wife was having a lot of health issues, I, Nick was like, you should go to the doctor and get some Adderall. And I went to the doctor just like for a physical. And I was just like, tell me, yeah, I'm really stressed out. I'm really like sad and just can't concentrate at work. I could sit here for hours, can't concentrate. And it's like, you should get some SSRIs. Do you want me to write your prescription? I'm like, no. <laughs> Anything else? Mm, almost, oh, almost. I'm warmer. <laughs> no, I'm not depressed. I'm a little sad. Yeah, try to do some inception. It's like rhymes with like, you know, ketamine, amphetamine. <laughs> 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 if I could just have it all, have it all. <laughs> no, but he wouldn't. You should have been like, I'm just a little baby. I sit in the classroom and I can concentrate. I'm like, take it. <laughs> no, it's because we don't have any. That's why. It's because we ran out of Adderall, Adderall two, of years ago, two years ago. Sucks. I know. Yeah. Can't count. How can you run out of Adderall? 
Do they, do they make it in Ukraine or something? I think they just give it to just jihadis running into battle. <laughs> now they have to save it for Hamas. It's a great thing to give somebody. I guess maybe... No, they give them... They, have, they were all high on something else. They have like a drug that they make in Syria. I forget what it's called, but it's like... It's like hashish. A, no, no, not hashish. Hashashans. We would have... We would you, know have the, you know the theory? No. But hashish is because... We call them assassins because it's... Hashishions or whatever. It's from the word hashish. Assassin. Because we used to give him hash oh. before we went. To assassinate? Yeah. Like it was like... Did you ever smoke hash? There is a, sto- there is a story there is, about it that... Can you assassinate people this laying king, on the floor? This king came to this guy <laughs> and, and he was like, I have so many more soldiers. And he was like, yeah, but do you have this? And he told one guy to jump from a cliff and he did. What a story, something like that. It's, it's What's story. that guy it's, on it's hash? Really good. <laughs> it's history. We're oh. talking about history. It it's history yeah. fact. It's like, I don't have that. I give up. Yeah, you, just, <laughs> you just have all the hash soldiers just eating, getting real fat, and then jumping off a ledge onto the enemy. <laughs> Smushing them. It's like Super Mario Warfare. Yeah. <laughs> the, way the way we did it originally is like we would give him, uh, we would give everybody hash. And then they say, the enemy got all snacks. <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine you know you get dry mouth can you imagine if you're like in the desert like in Saudi Arabia and you have dry mouth and you have to go to the well to get water and the well is like who knows how far it is in the fucking desert riding a camel and shit <laughs> so rough <laughs> it My makes God. you tough tough people dude yeah no so getting up and getting it from like the sink is no wonder we're mad <laughs> 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 All right, we should conclude this one. Uh, I don't know. We'll put it up. We have join us on YouTube if you're not subscribed. Was, uh, to YouTube. Filled with drama, laughter, tears. Oh, the whole journey. It was the, it was the real deal. This one. Okay. Thank people for the 20k and also oh, Marvin backing tracks. Oh, oh yeah, we're starting. Channel. We're starting Marvin backing tracks. We can say it to... now after like two hours of rambling. Why? Don't you want to jam after all this? Don't you want to jam on a backing track? Because nobody is listening still. Okay. Oh, Nick, can you show Danny uh, the spaceship? Wait, are we done? Yeah, we're done. All right. Goodbye, everybody. See ya.